All right. So this is Ian Lewis for the Sacred Inclusion Network, uh, coming from Ecuador. And I'm here with my friend Arturo, who's in Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Uh, how you feeling, my friend? Feeling great. Everything's smooth. Feeling great. Great and smooth. Smooth down in Costa. Yeah, we're we're both in a pretty amazing places. And so, yeah, so this is a podcast we're doing, and it's a follow-up to the presentation and discussion that we had called The Pathways to Sacred Economics. And um, just for a little context, so we planned on doing this presentation, and me and Arturo were going, like, how are we going to get this presentation into 20 minutes and then also ask the audience questions? And Arturo mentioned that, like, we really won't be ha have time to really get into it like he would like to because the topic is just so vast. So I suggested, hey, like, you know, maybe we can do a, a follow-up podcast. And um, that's exactly what we're doing. So if you haven't watched our video, The Pathways to Sacred Economics, you can watch that either here or here or in the description below. And, um, and yeah, it went great. You know, I presented for 20 minutes and then Arturo led the discussion. But the remaining hour and 10 minutes after my presentation, I didn't get to speak one time because all of our community and the viewers just had so much good input and questions and answers. So we just are doing this podcast to address some of the points that we wanted to talk about and that were mentioned in the present or in, in the discussion. And yeah, so just a quick, quick overview. So sacred economics, it's basically like a philosophy or a guideline to help create an economic system that works for the majority of the people on planet, as well as all life on the planet. Um, and again, if you um, want to know more information, you can watch the presentation I did on sacred economics and sacred commerce, as well as listen to the discussion. So I would like to start with a question that our founder, Angelo, asked. And so he, he prefaced it by saying that, you know, all of the stuff we discussed in the discussion um, sounds great, but he's a bit cynical that like anything is really going to change. And then he asked, Short of disaster, what can we do to transition to all of the flowery things that we were talking about? So first, I would like to hear what your answer to that is, and then I will uh, talk. About, give you mine. Yeah, um, I think he's right. It's it's um, and it it happens a lot in these uh, sessions. I feel it it's great for for discussion, but it might not go uh, deep enough. And it's like, it's like if, if it doesn't have a core or, you know, an outcome after. So, or maybe it does, but we don't see it. I don't know. So these are my, my reflections um, on it. So I went this way on it. I, I feel like there's, a, there's something to be done individually and then collectively. And at an individual level, I think we can, well, it's kind of like what we're doing this month. We we can practice kindness with our community, connect with, more with the community, just work with um, a tribal mindset. Yeah. And it's like we, we have been programmed to be individualistic. Uh, it is like uh, we live in that era uh, right now and we are more individual than e ever and more self-centered than ever and it's really tricky to uh, get out of it but but I, it feels like a, a lot of the conflict is is there in my opinion that's at individual level and at a larger scale um, I was reflecting on on current initiatives like UN efforts to end world challenges so we must reconnect with ancient wisdom of the original habitants, like, mm. you know, the tribals, um, the originals before colonization. There's a lot of ancient wisdom there that works and we're just not, not using. We completely shifted in a different direction. Um, yeah, we just uh, need to rethink the way we na navigate this world and rethink the way we uh, quote unquote own things because um, this concept of owning 
owning things, it's also having a very negative impact in the world, right? Um, let's say you own a piece of land and think about that. You own a square piece of land. How, how crazy is that? It's like, yeah, you build your house there and you're sort of like your king in this piece of land. And your free will is, is uh, you know, at hand there. But is it really? I mean, can you depend on just that piece of land or are you connected to something bigger? Like, you know, the sea, the air. How do you purchase air in the first place? But we purchase land. It, it's so so that's what I mean when I say concept of owning has to change you, you, we don't need to own things more what we really need is access to things in other words you don't need to own a car you just need to have enough cars so you can access them but it doesn't have to be under your name it doesn't have to be a polluting machine either we're, we're just manufacturing all these things right it doesn't have to be a polluting machine. It can be an automated system, but we're just, yeah. Um, I went maybe too too long on, on that one, but yeah. No, not at, all, not at all. Well, yeah. First is, you didn't, man, we got all the time in the world to talk. Don't worry. Um, that if you're over a time limit or whatever, express yourself. And yeah, I, I agree with a lot with what you said. Actually, I have a question for you. Do you know how much the, I think it was the Dutch purchased manhattan for from the native indians that were there have you heard no. this so i think it was like 26 dollars. they purchased the all of manhattan mm. and it's because the natives didn't understand how you could own land they were just like they were confused and i think the quote was actually like you want to buy the land what are you going to buy the clouds next so like they didn't understand the concept of yeah. purchasing land and i think you know like you said since the ideas of the colonial settle, settler mindset has creeped into um, the West and really all over the world. Um, a lot of destruction has uh, has been the result. And um, um, first, I have to speak about something that Tradon said. And mm -hmm. he pretty much, the, when he answered Angelo's question, he, and I'm going to read that, I got it up here. He said, I would say that destruction is needed. Like in a lot of cases, there has to be some disruption or destruction so that pain can be transferred into gold. And he said that he's willing to go through this disruption to, you know, kind of do what he feels needs to be, what needs to happen. Because he sees that, you know, with our economy, there's a lot of shadows that need to be illuminated on. And in yeah. that way, a fight has to happen. And mm. also like throughout history, a lot of major changes, positive or negative, has also come, always come with some sort of destruction and disruption. And I got to say that, like, I do agree with him a lot in that sentiment. Like, I would love for the fact for humanity to kind of just stand together and rise up and force a new economic system. But I really don't see that happening. And... That's just kind of what it is. What I see, I do recognize that there is a consciousness shift happening on Earth. And like more and more people are understanding that just the way, first of all, there's a spiritual dimension to reality that we've been ignoring. And our economic system is, has just led to a lot of devastation, sickness, disease, poverty, inequality. It has led to more wealth for some, but at what cost? And it's seeming more and more like the cost is way deeper than the benefit. And for me, it's more like how big are these disru disruptions going to be? Like, are we talking like a series of COVID-19 disruptions where like obviously COVID-19 was a huge, shook up the world, but it wasn't like every aspect of our lives was forced to change. Are we talking about like power grid, economic collapse, rapid climate disasters because it does seem that you know there are rapid rapid changes that we're kind of being forced to adapt to and like you know Tradon said that if you look at history um pretty much every time there's been some sort of big change it's because of some sort of 
war or economic collapse or so, or new technology. And there is possibility of like us kind of inventing our way out of this where we, these new technologies emerge and all of a sudden we get leads to a more peaceful, prosper, prosperous life. But on the other hand, there are people that are trying to use these technologies to, to create this digital totalitarian system at the same time so that, you know, a minority can control the minority. So it's a it's a delicate balance. But like to get back more to Angelo's question is what can we personally do about it? Um, I really I think it starts with just like your personal consciousness shift, because I do think that, you know, everybody is kind of having some sort of upgrade, whether it's just mentally, emotionally, spiritually, where everyone on humanity is realizing that something's wrong, something needs to be done. And for me, all I know is I can't change anybody. I can't control what you do. I can't control what anybody does, but I can control what I do and try to live the most healthiest, just enlightened life that I possibly can. But it takes a lot of sacrifice. Like it really does take sacrifice if you want to help push the consciousness in the right direction. Um, it's not easy. And yeah, you know, it takes a lot of effort. And I was thinking about this and I really think that, you know, so the acronym of um, sacred economics or sacred commerce is PASS. And that refers to like the business aspect of creating a sacred business. But I really think if you take this acronym and extrapolate it down to your personal life, it really applies the same. So, and if you remember like profit, P is for profit. And it's like kind of re, kind of what you talked about, like owning. It's restructuring what profit means. Like, are you gaining wealth just so you can have it and hoard it? Or are you trying to better yourself, your family, your community, the world? Are you trying to share and... In that way, we do have to look back, like you said, towards how our ancestors lived, because I really think that for us to move forward into the future, um, we have to reconnect with a more healthy, sustainable lifestyle. Um, mm -hmm. And then the, the A is for awakening, right? And that's all about, you know, I feel like embracing these changes and adapting to them. And but like consciously willing to look at it, like I actually just uh I think I read something or I watched a YouTube video that said, so before the Industrial uh, Revolution, people were born, and then when they died, there was no technological advances within their lives. It just wasn't a thing. Where now things are changing so freaking rapidly, it's like unbelievable. So, but we have to be able to see that. And to try to build a strong mentality to just have a resilience so we can deal with this changing world, right? And then also, you know, like adapt pretty much. I can't, for lack of a better term, um, so that we can, you know, move forward in a better way. And, you know, that's why I moved to Ecuador so I can learn how to live off the land because I kind of saw the writing on the wall and, and also my soul just kind of yearned for like a more healthy, natural experience. But yeah, it's, I think it's really about trying to build a strong mentality and then also having conversations like this, building community and then sharing with others and trying to inspire others to do the same. Um, and that's why I think what we're doing right now is so beneficial. And that's why sacred inclusion is so cool. And then the other two S's are just like sustainability and service. Like, you know, sustainability is, again, it's back to sacrifice. It's like, you know, you could, how much you want to do, you could like, you know, me and you are farmers. We're trying to work the land. We're trying to create food for our family. Or you could just stop buying stuff from huge corporations like Amazon and instead buy from a small business. That's a small sacrifice. Or maybe you can grow your own food or voting with your dollars are you going to support this massive corporation who's literally destroying the earth or are you going to support a small business and grow and help your community um and that also intertwines with service like yeah. why are we living here are we am i trying to be my best person so i can like stunt and show everyone how cool i am 
Or am I trying to be the best person so I can help my friends and the people I love mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially, and, you know, like, stop being a consumer and just like, are you just working, working, working? So you just consume and watch TV? Yeah. Or are you like trying to build up your community? And um, yeah, that's really what I came up with. So that's yeah. my, and um, so now I want to jump to the next point, which is, um, so Jacqueline is a woman who I don't know. I don't know where she came from, but she came into our discussion and she said something very, very interesting that I'm going to read right now. And she said, one thing I want to remind people is that money is an agreement. The whole economy is based on agreements. And that's the reason why revolutions happen in history, because people stop agreeing. People simply say, no, we're not doing this anymore. And an economy is a social construct. We agree to, and we agree to every day with everything that we do. And the moment we go back to a small community, the place that we live, people that we know, and start understanding that economy is actually the way that we live together, which I do talk about more in the presentation. And she says, I think that's the place we need to go right now to get out of the huge idea of economy. What we really need to do as individuals is to step out of the whole paradigm and realize that we have the power to simply not participate and to create alternatives. So my question is, what comes up for you when you hear that? Yeah, of course, um, we shouldn't just uh, stop buying things and and you know reduce consumerism. That that might not be enough. That's the thing. Um, but yeah, I I came up with with exactly the same, and and I also I also wrote down slower paced lifestyles, which is mm. what I'm you know doing. It's like what's the rush now uh, i get the all this idea of of uh, progress um, or for the sake of progress uh, or where that thought form came uh, you know how how it manifested in humanity but it is it's just irrelevant now that 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 way of handling the world is it was ignorant, uh, uh, mal-informed, or you know, it wasn't. There wasn't enough if information there, and uh, yeah, we just didn't know enough. But now we know that the planet is round; it's a self-sustaining system, and um. It's just old habit and really, really old practices and, and and just really old fear too, I think. It's just old, old, old fear that has been, you know, um that it's 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 ongoing in the collective and, and we just don't seem to be able to overcome it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I also got, oh, the progress idea, redefine progress is just what I talked about. This definition under the current capitalist framework is no longer serving us. Yeah, I, I like sacred economics and, and their idea of, of uh, the well use of money. Um, okay. And others like you know the the Venus Project, uh, which is actually outgrowing the need for money and outgrowing the need for a political system too. Um, mm. it, it's very radical, and of course, it's unthinkable to to accept to for for many um, because that implies losing oneself. If you're a politician, or if you are the Pope, or if you are a priest in your community, would you like to stop, you know, you'd like to stop being the priest or the Pope or or the millionaire? Nobody wants that. That's why it's so hard to get out of that pattern. But yeah, and oh, 
uh, something something I wanted to mention, kind of like for the previous um, question or or Angelo's uh, reflection was okay. that we were doing. Uh, oh, that we we should support the UN efforts. Why why do I say that? I I think um that that initiative might be a, a little corrupted too, but at least the intention is is good and and there's something uh going on there and i also was made aware of of uh, a movement called um i have it right here it's called the um because i knew i knew i i, I was going to forget about it so um oh the tax me now movement uh in germany mm. in austria so the wealthy people of of the area are uh, pretty much they want to be taxed and and yeah they want to be actively working for for tax justice in Germany and Austria. So I think that's a great idea. Um, it's not it's not like the wealthy people aren't willing to cooperate. It it has been done there's also some information out there that says that if if the one percent if you take out one percent of all of the wealth of all the wealthy people you end all you end poverty pretty much in the world so oh, yeah think about that for for you know reflect on that it's like who who, who is trying to avoid this or i don't know maybe maybe we shouldn't ask for who's instead of Instead, we should be, you know, instead of just pointing fingers and it's just work on something that that promotes, you know, this change. Yeah, but how to get there is like, I really don't know. It needs a lot of organization and, and, and how do we even, how do we, do we even get there as a, as a species? because languages divide us um you know i wonder how much or how 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 much communication is truly being exchanged let's say between countries for example yeah 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 i i don't think i know the answer to any of the questions you pose uh well a lot of the yeah, a lot of this is like you know beyond the scope of one individual person or really the human mind to answer, but um I do think it's worth it to talk about and um and I do I love I absolutely love what um Jacqueline had to say uh, I don't know who she is or how she yep. ended up on the call, yep. but I just I have a question for you it's that um do you know what makes money valuable? Mm -hmm um so have you heard about have you heard about the side guys movement Do you, the side you know? guys yes yes yeah. that's one yeah. of the first when i first like woke up in mm -hmm. uh 2013 a big part of it was the zeitgeist guys uh movie right yeah that that's a that's a reality check uh information there um yeah so yeah that's where i really that's where i kind of like got my understanding of what money is and also you know reading articles over the internet um the venus project is is also big on 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 this or i was influenced by you know the way it was explained to me and so there's something obscure going on in, in the monist monetary system and that is that it 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 feeds off scarcity um that's why they are so afraid of change because if you make things abundant then money loses its value you no longer need money for a lot of things in other words if we had um if we had i don't know lemon trees all over the country Will you buy lemon trees? No, you wouldn't because it's right there on your on your backyard. You just go there and grab it. And that could be like an example of everything else in the world because we could produce 
this level of of abundance uh for all uh but yeah i think i think the uh, going back to the question money is actually fuel i i, I wouldn't say all of it or or just uh or primarily of it but i would say that a lot of it comes from from scarcity and the whole thing um spinning around that um uh, like uh, planned obsolescence which is yep. you know, so fucked up excuse me my nah, English. You're good. <laughs> but yeah i like what you said because uh, i agree i think it is scarcity is a big part of it and it's really based on power and control you know if you can control the the food production or the production of resources, then you can control when or how people eat and people consume resources, and then you have more power and control. Um, but yeah, to, to answer the question pretty much, so money is valuable. It's because people believe that money is valuable. That's really it. That enough, Some people came together and said, we're going to, okay, money is now valuable. And they convinced other people to think that money is valuable because like inherently a dollar bill or a digit and a screen, um, it has no intrinsic value. It's really only valuable because you know that if you give people these bills, then someone will take it and then give you something of actual value. And um, yeah, like one thing about our economic system that I, I've learned from, from studying is like pretty much that best way to put it is this is a massive scam like it really is from the core of it it's a scam that but it's created if it, it can only benefit like a large enough quantity of people for a certain amount of time because it was inherently created so that money flows to the top from the lower and the middle classes and right the architects of our society know this and that's why they're desperately trying to transition the world into digital currency because at some point our economic system is going to make life too difficult it's i mean it's already happening really but it's going to make it too difficult for the vast majority of people to survive and that is when revolutions start like like Jacqueline said and so you know they're they're trying to get this digital currency before fiat before the dollar and all these other economic um, all these other currencies collapse. And so I put up two quotes that I would like to read for you. One is by Henry Ford and one is by Thomas Jefferson. I think super interesting. So um, the first one is, it is enough that people of, of the nation do not understand our banking and monetary system. For if they did, I believe there'd be a revolution before tomorrow morning. And Henry Ford said that. And then Thomas Jefferson said that, I believe the banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, first by inflation, then by deflation, the banks and corporations will grow so big and will deprive the people of the property that their children wake up homeless on the continent that their fathers conquered. And um, I think that's exactly what's happening. I think that's why money is so important that you know, in, in 1913, the Federal Reserve is a private bank, got control of the money, and they've been manipulating things ever since so that yeah. people, you know, the people have less and there's more scarcity and there's more survival mindset. Because when you're just barely surviving, you don't have time to make any of these sacrifices that we talked about. And, uh, you know, for me, a big part of me making the, the change, the sacrifice that I made is learning that, like, Oh, like our monetary system is a whole scam. And, you know, there's like Henry Ford and Thomas Jefferson and all these old people hundreds of years ago, they flat out said it. And it's the same monetary system. It's only getting the scam has just got more and more uh, intricate. And so for me, like it just goes back to voting with your dollar. Um, you know, if we could get enough people to stop Matt shopping at these corporations to really stop paying taxes, really. But maybe that's a little too revolutionary because these these governments are using the people's profits or tax money 
and they're obviously manipulating. They don't care about them. They're using it to kill poor people so they can make more money and become more powerful. At this point, it's very, very, very blatant. Um, and but like you said, that might not be enough. Um, that you know, enough people might not be able or think about making these changes. And it's really hard to say. Like, like when I think about it, I really think that there's a chance that, you know, we could just move into this new AI robot future where, you know, people have a lot more comforts, but a lot less freedom. Or there's a chance that we can move into a way where this probably was some big breakdown where people start to fight for their sovereignty again. And that's why I think, like you said, getting back to the land and um, what we're doing is 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 so important. And because for me that I feel like I'm in a place where like right now, regardless of what is happening in the world, like my close friends, my community, we're good. Like we got enough food, food. like the army's going to have to come in and take us away with guns, shoot blazing. It, you know what I mean? So everything is like. I'm built this strong community and I want to help other people or inspire other people that it's like, you know, and you don't have to live in the, in these big cities with the toxic air or any of this, like it's a sacrifice. And for me it's totally worth the sacrifice, but it gets back to what Jacqueline says, like people really need to start building community. I think that our society has was set up to be super hyper-focused on individuality and, and, uh, and like shun the community. Uh, but there's like massive power in community. It's literally been the backbone of existence forever, for thousands and thousands of years. And, you know, the architects of our society, they keep us divided in our boxes or our homes that are all boxes and with people cages. watching their box. Cages, exactly. Because they know that when they're separate, it's easier to control. And And that's why the mental health and suicide and drug addiction is yes. through the roof in these Western societies because it's unnatural. So we need to get back to more natural systems, come okay. together. Like, so, you know, just tr just me or you trying to step forward and being a community leader, that's yeah. all I can do. That's, that's, that's having these conversations. Um, I think it's just really important. And, and, you know, the last thing she said really cool is about economy that now it's this big thing. But even in my presentation, I talked about the root word of economy, which uh, is a Greek word, it was oikonomia, something like that. It's really about like managing your household or your small community. Mm -hmm. And so I think we do need to decentralize. We need to like build these healthy communities. And that is the best way I can see to fight back against these like massive conglomerates who are just like eating up everybody's wealth and everybody's resources um yeah. and you know me personally i moved to a different country so yeah. because i wanted to be with around more like like-minded people who have more similar aspirations who want to grow a bunch of food and want to build community um because the effort first reward of like trying to be an organ community organizer in south philly it didn't add up but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't try like it's not worth trying to and even like regardless of what happens it just feels better like you feel more healthy when you have strong community it's fun it's yeah. like enjoyable um so yeah that's pretty much my so. yeah exactly we we all need more of it because we've yeah. all we're all in this system where it's so hard to do that and you were just telling me that you were like sitting around by the fire watching shooting stars with your friends and i'm like wow that sounds amazing like like yeah, we all do. We all do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I really appreciate you. The last little thing, quick point we can go over is actually. So my mom was on the call, and oh, yeah. um, and she she said pretty much that like she feels that things are changing, um, and things that are becoming better, and she used the example that one college classes are they used to be all about like business classes used to be about making money. Now they're talking about more sustainable business that doesn't harm the environment. And she used an example of how my my cousin's friend's husband is a real estate agent who is totally focused on, he's a Hispanic man, 
totally focused on helping Hispanic and black communities or people um, in like lower income, middle class, get houses and get properties. And so people are focusing on more engaging and are engaging in more conscious business practices instead of just like trying to make money. So her thing was like, she feels of like we are headed in the right direction, but I'm not so sure. It seems like we kind of are and we're kind of not. So what do you say about that? Where do you think the, the direction of, I guess, humanity or let, specifically our, how we think about economy and money? Do you think we're headed in the right direction or do you think we veered off course a little bit? I, I think the, I think uh, I'm an optimist, so I think we are headed in the right direction. Um, it, it's kind of like what we discussed previously or, or talked about previously. It's just not not fast enough or not deep enough. Mm. Um, it, it, it is the right direction or the initiatives are out there. It, they're just not strong enough or going fast enough. Um, we clearly weren't able to to stop the no return point for the planet and now we're on on boiling mode um and heat is only gonna get worse yeah um yeah there's just uh so so much resistance from many of us humans um we just maintain the status quo and keep things the way they are because of you know status power or whatever position that gives you in society is uh, i i guess it, it just has to be so hard to let go for them uh, i i don't know but i mean it, it isn't hard for me i think to let go of if if we had to redesign everything from scratch and and someone comes to me or my my community or my society comes to me and tells me, hey, hey, you no longer own this land because guess what we're doing? We're, cha we're changing everything and now you don't have to work or now you don't have to, you know, you'll do whatever. Uh, I don't know. You can do art or live a, a life of uh, traveling or whatever. And and say you just don't own this land anymore and now you can walk the earth um i wouldn't have a problem with that i wouldn't have a problem with letting go of my toyota out there if there were enough means of transportation to i don't know explore the world you know but that's just me so yeah uh, i guess it's just a uh, it's half individual and half collective. It has to be, it has to come from both directions. Um, of course, we have to recycle. Of course, we have to do all these um, best practices. But the real problem is the, the initial design itself. Like garbage is designed. So it is a great business, you know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah i mean we if you if we don't want plastic what we should do is just not not use it in the first place right but easier said than done so much uh you know plastic comes from oil and the entire infrastructure is built on oil and plastic we wouldn't have the modern world without plastic so um no wonder there's so much resistance there. Um, we we can do a lot better, but I I don't know if it's even uh, achievable with um, um, this this plastic called hemp. Oh, oh, it's like like hemp hempcrete, for example. It's a mix of uh, hemp and concrete. Um, you mentioned Henry Ford. He he built a car entirely made made out of cannabis, for example. Wow. So yeah, the initiatives are there. We mm -hmm. can do it, but uh, maybe not fast enough or deep deep enough. Yeah, that's that would be like my reflection on on the whole thing. 
Yeah, yeah. We'll 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 see, right? Um, I'm right there with you that like, well, I see really I'm not sure if we're headed in the right direction or not. Like in some ways it feels like we are, and in some ways it feels like we're not. But at the same time, I do feel that if it, like the, the positive changes aren't happening enough or fast enough, like you said. And I feel one is just comfort, you know, like really, you know, especially I'm, I'm American, especially like American from the 1950s to but let's say 2000 have had the greatest era of prosperity that pretty much has anyone has ever experienced in history of the world. And that has, you know, that has also felt in other places, specifically like Western Europe and even in Costa Rica, you know, there's a more, it's the wealthiest country in South, um, South and Central America. So that, that comfort that the wealth has brought has made a lot of people stagnant is, you know, they don't have to make much effort into changing the world. They can be on the computer and they can order any weird thing they want from Amazon and they can watch YouTube videos or porn or whatever the hell they want to do. And then they'll, you know, find some way of some way to work and they don't need to, they don't need to do much. Like these days, because of these modern comforts, you don't have to do too much to live. You kind of just got to wake up. You can, you can get your food delivered every day. You can go to work. So, you know, it, it it's hard to, if you're in that cycle and and that's definitely been pushed upon us. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they say be dependent, dependent, be dependent on dominoes, be dependent on whatever to be dependent on the government. So yeah. to actually create the changes we need, we need independent people who are willing to, to fight for themselves, which yeah. is, is, is very difficult. So it's like collectively, that's also kind of like why, um, I if I had to if I was a betting man, I would bet more on on some destruction happening and forcing people to be like, hold up, what are we doing? We got to change instead of just people just being like, hey, OK, now it's time. You know what? I've had enough. We're going to now force some change or we're going to fight for our rights or we're going to protest or, or whatever we're going to do. I don't see that happening just naturally. And. So, like I said, but on one hand, I do feel as if there is a consciousness shift, a spiritual evolution going on through humanity. So I do, like, you know, I first started talking about this in 2013, 10 years ago. And when I first started talking about it, most people thought I was crazy. Yeah. And now 10 years later, people are calling like, yo, Ian, what's happened? Especially during COVID. People are like, Ian, what's going on? People are, all these people who would be like, Ian, shut up, you're crazy, are now like, yo, Ian... We got to change, like, so many more people are on this similar oh, yeah. wavelength of, like, something needs to be done, at least in my personal life. And mm -hmm. I'm seeing, like, you know, videos that would maybe get, like, 3,000 views are now getting millions and millions of views. So mm -hmm. more people are, like, consciously, like, being like, yeah. okay, something's yeah. wrong. We got to do something. What we got to do? Do I want to do it? Yeah. Not so sure. But there's an understanding that something needs to get done. But on this other hand, it seems like, we're actually moving in the wrong direction where AI is starting to take artists jobs and like AI just had like, just seems to has the power to really, you know, create a society that none of us can even fathom. But like, we're talking about how the American way of life is unhealthy right now, as far as just like, you know, lack of community, lack of healthy foods, lack of purpose what's it going to look like when the robots just do everything and people just all they have to do is sit in front of their tv you know like i feel like we're headed in the wrong direction but it's like it's, it's, it kind of feels like who's going to win and it almost feels like i saw someone said it i forget it was, i think it was glenn greenwald he said it's not left versus right anymore or not politic it's establishment versus anti-establishment because there's people who are saying look this is how we've been doing it we're going to do it this way. And most of those people profit off of the way that it's done. Like most of the people who are fighting for like, oh yeah, capitalism, shut up environmental people. They're, you know, in their suburbs in their nice houses with their nice cars. Those, those are the people pushing that versus the people who are especially like, you know, 
middle America or, you know, all over Africa and Nigeria, whatever, all these poverty, they're the ones who are fighting for survival, saying, we need to make a change. Most of them, a lot of work 12 hours a day, make like $250 an hour. What can, do they even have the time to give any energy towards doing anything different? Not really. So it's like, are, are the, are, is this new spiritual consciousness going to win or is the global technological dictatorship going to win? Like, which way are we going to go? And yeah. all I'm doing is like, you know, like I said, I've, I've done my research and now I've taken the leap to put myself what I feel like is the best position, no matter what happens, that mm -hmm. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I'm living a purposeful life and I am meeting people like you that these conversations like I feel empower us. Yes. I'm putting like, you know, I feel like we're, we're in a, we're, we're putting ourselves in a better position and like, especially like you just me, you like, you know, you got your farm, you're working the farm. You're like, man, this shit is hard work, but a hey, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm supporting something that I believe in. Yeah. And, yeah. And so that, that that's that, also not enough. That That's very, very clear that it isn't enough. It, it It's unsustainable. It's, it's only three of us. And, you know, we, we get to eat well because we're not using pesticides. But again, that's just not deep enough that, that everyone should, like everyone, all of my neighbors should. But, you know, I live in a, I'm a very different person living in an area of the country that is very conservative. And I see so much in yeah breach mm. but yeah i i guess i, I all of, i mean most definitely i could be doing more than that than i am right now but uh yeah there's harmony there just yeah it, it's not a, not sustainable i think yeah but it's it's what, what we have and we can do and, and we think different and Everyone's starting to think different as well. Um, yeah, I'm an optimist, and and going back to Tradion's uh, reflection, I uh, I couldn't agree more. It it, it seems like uh, big change or uh, a lot of suffering and, and 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 needs to happen before something good comes out. Um, you, even it's the same as uh, uh, Fresco's reflection and the whole thing. He, he he seems unlikely that the Venus project will ever will ever be a reality. Um, you know, so there you have it. It's like um, more of us are coming to the same conclusions as well. Yeah. And um, I think we can mostly leave it at that, but I'll leave with the fact that, you know, it seemed unlikely that people were able to talk to each other from Ecuador and Costa Rica via screen not too long ago. And it also seemed unlikely that people were being able to fly in the sky and go all over the world not too long ago. So it does seem unlikely, but anything is possible. And um, yeah, I appreciate you so much, Arturo, uh, a, a nice. valued member of our community, Sacred Inclusion Network. And anybody who's still watching, we appreciate you. Um, there's definitely a chance, talking to Angelo, that this might be a, a thing more. Maybe like, you know, every few months, four, six months, we just get on and just talk because why not? Um, and, you know, and anyone else who um, wants to participate, this is an open forum. Like, you know, we have a very, we have a small, strong community of people who are trying to make changes in this world. And um, so thank you. God bless all of y'all. And um, we are out of here. Actually, is there anything else you want to say? I'll leave the last words to you. Sir, well, let's just do it again. Another podcast, some other time. It was awesome. Yeah. Thank you, my right. friend. My brother. Peace. Thank you, everybody.